Now, more than ever, almost anybody can become an influencer, and it's getting easier and easier for people to get their five minutes of fame online and start making money by uploading videos to social media. Not every person online is doing it for money, of course. Some people are doing it to raise awareness for a cause or documenting their journey during a major life change, such as being diagnosed with a terminal illness, to show other people going through similar things that they are not alone. And then there's the depraved few who have found a gap in the market where they can pretend to be someone raising awareness for their rare type of cancer, but in actuality have no disease at all and are raising money for a treatment that they don't need with the intent of keeping the money for themselves. It's your Uncle Herman here and I'm still an alpha male and today I will be talking about two different women who use social media to make money off of a fake cancer story and who are contributing to a growing online trend of people faking needing life-saving treatments to prey on people's empathy and their bank accounts. Before I dive in, I want to take a quick moment to thank my sponsor for this video, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that allows you to choose a different fragrance every month so that you can try a bunch of different designer perfumes for a much more reasonable price than if you were to buy them as a full-size bottle. Perfumes are such a big investment because they're so expensive and you might get bored of the scent before the bottle runs out. I know I have a ton of fragrances at the back of my cupboard that I haven't used for years, but with Scentbird, you can get a 30-day supply of each fragrance so that you can switch it up each month depending on your mood or the season and find the scent that suits you best. This month I've been using the Off Court Fig Leaves and White Musk scent which is a lovely earthy gender neutral scent, perfect for this sort of autumnal season going into winter. I also tried Cross River Gorilla by Sanctuary which has a similar earthy vibe and was last month's favourite for me. Scentbird also offer flexible subscription plans so if you want to skip a month or take a break it's super easy and you get to choose which perfumes you want to try each month from a huge range of both indie brands and designer brands so if those steamy perfume ads are working on you and you think, I want to try that, you don't have to commit to a full bottle. You can just go to Scentbird and add it to your order for that month. So use my code at checkout to get 55% discount off your trial subscription, making it less than $9 per month. This deal is available for those of you in the US and Canada. So if that's you and you want to try out some perfumes, be sure to click the link in the description and have a browse of Scentbird's website. And thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. One of the most infamous cancer-faking influencers, Belle Gibson, started her journey 10 years ago in 2013 and quickly became a renowned Instagram influencer, telling her followers that she had been diagnosed with an incurable brain cancer at age 20 and had just four months to live. She quickly gained thousands of followers and started to promote her wellness and healthy eating habits that were helping her cure her brain cancer. Her Instagram account quickly turned her into a wellness influencer and she gained over 300,000 followers, promoting alternative medicine as a cure for her supposed terminal brain cancer, which she was miraculously recovering from, despite being told that it was incurable. Well, um, for a person living with brain cancer, might I add, you look incredibly healthy. Tell us what your top tips, obviously it's quite holistic, your life at the moment, I imagine. What are your top tips for health? I think it's about getting back to the fundamentals of a healthy life. We talk about in the app going back to basics and eating more of those fundamental foods, you know, getting adequate water intake, eating more fruits and vegetables. It's really simple and people overthink it. Many young people with cancer followed her, seeing themselves reflected and hoping that by adopting her lifestyle and buying her books, they too could lead the cancer-free lifestyle that they could only dream of and that Belle claimed to have gained through healthy eating and wellness. She was encouraging people with cancer diagnoses to ditch chemotherapy and radiation and opt for natural cures because Belle Gibson was claiming that these things worked for her and not only that but she looked healthier than ever. In one BBC article they spoke to someone who actually did have cancer and who was following Belle at the time. They were desperate to get better and woke up one day to go to the hospital and decided that they were fed up with all the poking and prodding. She said chemo wasn't working for me, I should come off and try clean eating. She said Belle Gibson was saying what she was doing was curing her cancer, it was making it better. I had her there to look at as proof, I had her on my phone, she was in magazines, she was on the news so I trusted her. On multiple occasions Belle Gibson claimed that her cancer was coming back. In this post she said, it hurts me to find space tonight to let you all know with love and strength that I've been diagnosed with a third and 
fourth cancer. One is secondary and the other is primary. I have cancer in my blood, spleen, brain, uterus and liver. I am hurting. But time and time again she would beat these terminal and inoperable cancers holistically. From this she founded an app called The Whole Pantry which she claimed was the world's first health, wellness and lifestyle app. And the app did incredibly well with 200,000 downloads and Apple even used it in their demo version of their very first Apple Watch and flew Bell across to Silicon Valley for the launch. She then published a companion cookbook to her app where she continued to peddle her cancer story as a way to sell the recipes that supposedly helped her battle this cancer. Selling false hope to people who were buying the book with actual terminal diseases looking for some sort of holistic cure. And Belle wasn't just faking her cancer on social media. She went extra lengths to fake it to her family and friends. She was reported faking a 40 minute seizure at her son's birthday party during which she urged people not to call an ambulance because she didn't like hospitals. The fake fit was violent and was witnessed by her son and his young friends along with the adults at the party who were reported to have been distraught and crying. This happened two weeks before the post where she claimed to have been diagnosed with a third and fourth cancer. And after the incident she wrote on Facebook, I have seizures often as a result of my brain cancer but nothing ever this long or intense. I'm extremely grateful for my friends and family who were there to support me through this and my team who were looking for new answers. Belle weaved her web of lies over years of posting on social media and slowly people started to notice that parts of her story did not add up. In 2015 her lies started to be exposed. People noticed that she described her first diagnosis as a stage 2 malignant tumour of the brain. But brain tumours are classified in grades, not stages. She also claimed that she was 20 at the time of her diagnosis in 2009, but records list her birth date as 1991, which would have made her 17 at the time. She started making excuses, saying that the cancers that were diagnosed in her blood, spleen, brain, uterus and liver were the result of a misdiagnosis by a mysterious German medical team that she refused to name. In 2015, Bell was interviewed by the Australian Women's Weekly, where she finally came forward and admitted that her cancer claims had been fabricated. She was quoted saying, In the last two years I've worked every single day living and raising up an online community of people who supported each other. I understand the confusion and the suspicion, but I also know that people need to draw a line in the sand where they still treat someone with some level of respect or humility, and I have not been receiving that. She essentially played the victim and said that she was being cyberbullied for faking having cancer. The same year, Bell gave an interview with 60 Minutes Australia, where she talked publicly about her fraud for the first time. Although she admitted to never having cancer, she maintained that she had never lied and had in fact been lied to by doctors who had given her incorrect information. Right, you claimed also in your book that you underwent chemotherapy and radiotherapy for two months. True yep. or false? At the time... True or false? True, because at the time I believed I was having radiotherapy. So, false. I believed that I was having radiotherapy. When he gave me medication, I was told that it was oral chemotherapy. And I believed it. Very soon after I'd been started this treatment here in Melbourne, I fell pregnant. And that was a huge catalyst for me. In what way? Because I thought, well, if I'm going undergoing chemotherapy, then I don't want that to affect my pregnancy. Oh, so you stopped the chemotherapy because you were pregnant? I stopped the chemotherapy for various reasons. I didn't know. Truth, little truth. Tara, I'm trying to draw on information. No, no, don't draw on information. Just be honest. I am Please being honest, be honest with you. She maintained that everything that she had said online was true to the best of her knowledge at the time. And despite the interviewer continuously catching her out on her lies, she keeps peddling her story. I mean, 2009 was a really bad year for you, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You had three heart operations. You suffered two cardiac arrests. You died mm -hmm. twice on the operating table. Mm -hmm. You had a stroke. Mm -hmm. And you were diagnosed with an operable brain tumour and given four months to live. Correct. And I do. Happened. I still have the heart condition and I was supposed to have surgery for that. You were supposed to have surgery. And I didn't. I mean, you go into extraordinary details. I had surgery about seven hours ago. The doctor comes in and tells me the draining failed and I went into cardiac arrest and died for just under three minutes. I had the most intense bruising from the paddles when they electrocuted me back to consciousness. I Minus think... the wires and constant throwing up of blood. Anyway, the procedure failed and I died. See, I haven't read back through all of that, but I also think when you're young and have gone through the situation I had just gone through, you are melodramatic. 
Despite being called out and being found guilty of five breaches of consumer law in 2017 and being fined over 400,000 Australian dollars, Belle Gibson's lies have only continued to unfold. Her house has been raided twice by the police due to unpaid fines in 2020 and 2021. It was then that it was revealed that Belle had adopted a new identity and she began referring to herself as San Bontu and claimed that she was going back home to Ethiopia. She claimed that she'd been accepted by the Oromo people after volunteering with them for four years. However, the president of the Australian Oromo Community Association in Victoria spoke to the press saying that she's not a community member and she's not working with the community. There's also no record of her doing any volunteering at all. My advice is in line with our hero Joa. You know, let's look to the Jasa, just like the Gada system teaches us, like our forefathers have taught us, like our leaders have, are telling us now. Conduct yourself with some Safu. Hold yourself. Don't make it worse for our people at this time. Defend yourselves and defend your honour, defend your identity. Belle Gibson seems to be intent on constantly reinventing herself with new webs of lies, refusing to admit any wrongdoing at every corner despite hurting thousands of people with her false hope and harmful narratives. Due to the coverage of Belle Gibson's trial, her story has been well documented in news articles, documentaries, and even in a whole book, and I will link the various sources below if you want to hear more details of her fraud and subsequent trial and sentencing. Belle's story shocked the world, but it certainly didn't stop other people from continuing to do the very same thing. Belle was around before the rise of TikTok, but now more than ever, there are more people having the very same idea. Maddie Russo claimed that she had been diagnosed with stage 2 pancreatic cancer at age 19 in February 2022 and started to document her cancer treatment journey on TikTok. The teenager from Iowa claimed to be going through chemotherapy and radiation therapy and started a GoFundMe page to raise money for her supposed medical bills and living expenses where she raised over $37,000. Over the course of a year, Maddie claimed that her cancer was spreading to her blood and to a tumour on her spine. She wrote on the GoFundMe page that she is still smiling even with feeding tubes and IV poles and that without the support of the people donating, she would not have made it this far. Little did her followers and donors know, though, that she was going through no such thing. I'm so thankful um, for each and every one of you guys, all of the prayers, all of the thoughts, the... Um, just the warm hugs, the warm feelings, the packages I've received, it has made this um, just a tiny bit easier. People were suspicious as to how she looked so healthy despite having this cancer diagnosis. But like Belle Gibson, when questioned as to how she was keeping her hair and not losing any weight or looking at all like a person going through chemotherapy typically does, she said that her healthy looks were all down to natural and alternative things that she was doing, such as taking multivitamins. Something I wanted to share was how I've been keeping my hair um, during treatment with chemo and radiation. Um, I've used some products that I think have definitely helped aid with keeping my hair, but I will say the main thing probably is the brand of chemo I'm on. So I take oral chemo, so it's chemo pills. And the brand of chemo I do take, um, it's, uh, it's more so not hair loss, it's hair thinning. And I have a lot of hair to begin with. Like I was blessed with like pretty thick hair. So um, thank goodness for that because I really haven't experienced a whole much like drastic hair loss um, or even hair thinning. I mean, if you would look at me, uh, you wouldn't even realize that I'm sick and going through treatment. So my sister actually um, found this and recommended this. It's it's by the brand HERS, like H-E-R-S. Um, it's on TV commercials a lot, but it's this hair regrowth treatment. I think it's every morning. Um, so biotin, collagen, and keratin are crucial vitamins that are shown to help with like hair, skin, and nail growth. And um, it's by the brand Well Labs. It's a beauty complex, but you can go to welllabs.com or I'm sure it's on Amazon. Um, but I've been taking these. I noticed a huge difference. Um, with my hair too. So that's been another really great product that that's helping. Though Maddie was promoting vitamins and collagen supplements rather than dieting and cutting out foods, the message was the same as Bell's. Cancer sufferers can look and feel like me if they just have a positive attitude and try alternative holistic methods, which is a disgusting and harmful message for those who do actually have cancer and who might be looking up to these people on social media. Maddie was interviewed by her local newspaper in October 2022 about her cancer journey, and she claimed that she 
was in the fight for her life. She told the journalist that surgery was not an option for her and that she had an 11% chance of survival. She said, I feel like when you deal with cancer, you never know when it's gonna happen or what it's gonna do. That's the unfortunate part. I wish everybody could just be cured and you could move on. As for me, I'm just gonna ride it out. She even had the nerve to say that her positive attitude was what was getting through her diagnosis. She said, you can't just choose to be mad at the cancer. It just happens to people. If you stay depressed and in a dark space, I feel like your body will never get better. She then said, I'm trying to continue on with life and still go to school, work, and keep doing things that are normal. I try to go at it with the best attitude because I think your attitude during treatment can play a huge part in your outcome. To say that she was just continuing having a positive attitude and continuing going to school and work as normal is an outrageous expectation to set for someone who supposedly had pancreatic cancer, leukemia, and a spinal tumor. She said, all you need to do is keep a positive attitude during treatment. And I just can't imagine knowing full well that you do not have cancer, telling a newspaper that people with cancer can just choose a positive attitude and choose not to be angry or depressed. She's setting wildly unrealistic expectations and comparisons for people who follow her and relate to her story or have a family member that does and she would even steal real cancer patients photos and post them on TikTok and Instagram pretending to be going through these cancer treatments. That is a European outlet. That's a European outlet. This picture is from Google. Shout out to all the blood donors out there. For real, shout out to you guys, but it, your blood did not go to Maddie. <laughs> Here's another one looking a bit more like an actual hospital setting than the other one. I just like, there's that damn wig again. And the poor innocent dog she keeps putting in this mess. This picture alone should put her in jail. She took this picture drained from chemo era. This was on her TikTok, drained from chemo era. Somebody reverse image searched it or something and found an actual person with cancer. She literally stole this photo, hoping that nobody would ever know. So it was also discovered that she had bought an IV and feeding tube to pose with for social media. And around this time, people started to suspect foul play as her pictures showed her wearing this medical equipment incorrectly. You can see that the actual positioning of the port per se is not accurate. Also, the way that it's secured, the type of tape that's used, is not the same clinical tape that we would use in the hospital. What is going on with that chest port? Mm -hmm. Definitely the same thing. As of today, Maddie Russo has been arrested and pleaded guilty to first degree theft. When the police raided her home, they were able to find evidence of the IV pole with a feeding pump filled with cotton swabs, a wig, and anti-nausea medication prescribed in a relative's name. She claimed in her case that she didn't do it for money or fame, but instead did it to get her family back together, which is a far-fetched explanation for what she did. As to why I did this and how somebody who looked like they had everything together could have such a mess. I didn't do this for money or greed. I didn't do this for attention. I did this in an attempt to try and get my family back together. I come from an extremely broken and separated family ever since I was two years old. Over the years, it has gotten steadily worse and a lot has happened internally to our family. A family is supposed to be one that's drawn together, not drift further and further apart. Luckily, the judge didn't buy it, saying, it's clear to the court that you were motivated by greed or perhaps social media fame. It's abundantly clear that this was not a momentary lapse of judgment. You appeared in interviews and social media. You made many appearances along the way. You could have stopped. You did not stop until you were caught. Maddie was fined $39,000 and she paid that fine and has now received a suspended sentence, meaning that if she serves her community service and her three years of probation, she will not face any further charges, which just goes to show that if you have enough money, you can get away with almost anything. Maddie and Belle are extreme examples of people who got away with faking cancer for a long time, but there are plenty more people trying this hoax in order to gain heroic fame on the internet and getting caught out. For example, Mian Bao Bao, a Taiwanese fitness influencer, claimed to have late stage pancreatic cancer and was exposed by her ex-husband for faking the cancer online for three years as she documented her weightlifting journey alongside fake hospital visits and treatments as she pretended to be fighting a serious cancer. Or the Twitch streamer known as Miss Dirty Bird, who confessed to her 
followers on a stream that she had been lying about having brain and lung cancer on Twitch. I don't want the message of this video to be to doubt people on social media when they say they have cancer because 99% of the time they are telling the truth and it takes a particular breed of depraved person to fake such an awful thing and the fact that it's even a thing that multiple people have done and gotten away with for a period of time makes me just want to pull the plug on the whole internet. I also find it interesting that there seems to be a particular breed of person that does this. It appears to be a fairly middle class or well off woman who claims to want some sort of attention from her family, but I don't really have time to psychologically unpack that, but I'm sure that means something. Anyway, thank you for watching if you made it this far, and thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in the description and check them out and use my discount code, it goes a long way to help the channel. Thank you again, and I'll see you next week.